Welcome to Focus Tech Tips, your resource for reliable energy access. This is Alessio Lario, Global Product Manager at Focus. We are eager to support our customers. Today, I'd like to answer the following common question that we've heard. How do you correctly size a surge protective device, also known as an SPD, for your power system? Before I continue, feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. An SPD or surge protective device is designed to get rid of voltage peaks. Essentially, if you have a lightning strike in the area or if there's some kind of irregularity on the grid and you're connected to the grid, such a voltage spike can damage your sensitive electronics in a power system. The SPD is there to prevent that from happening or at least to mitigate its effects. The way an SPD works is essentially it will take that excess voltage, which is higher than what the electronics can digest and will transfer that energy to ground and therefore protect the electronics from damage. Now, as you probably understand, it's important for that path to ground to be of low resistance. Essentially, if you don't have a good ground connection at the site of installation, then the SPD is can only do a very limited amount of protective work, essentially, and therefore it's more likely for your electronics to be damaged in the case of a surge event. So step number one is make sure that your system has a good connection to ground. Step number two, match the SPD to the lines or rather the inputs of your power conversion equipment that you're trying to protect. At Focus, we recommend protecting at least the PV input of your charge controller or your inverter charger, and if available in your system, your AC input. You only need to protect the AC input with an SPD if you are really connecting to an AC source such as a generator or a public grid. Next, look at what voltages occur at normal operation on the lines that you're trying to protect. So for example, if we look at the PV input of a charge controller, and let's just say that we can handle up to 95 volts on that PV input. That is the maximum PV voltage declared for that PV input. The SPD data sheet will give you a UC value. That's a capital U and a lowercase c. And this is the maximum operating voltage at which the SPD can operate indefinitely. So in other words, the SPD will do nothing until that voltage. That is essentially what the data sheet is guaranteeing you. And obviously the goal is for the surge protective device to protect from any voltages above, in this example, 95 volts. However, in reality, there will be quite a distance in terms of voltage between the actual maximum operating voltage, which is given in the data sheet of the SPD, and the voltage at which the SPD begins to act and where it begins to take energy away to reduce the voltage to avoid that surge event. And here you can already see one of the most common problems. Some people think that if they have, for example, a PV SPD laying around, which is maybe rated at 500 or 600 volts as that UC voltage, that that would be suitable for pretty much any PV system, which does not exceed that voltage. While it's true that nothing will be damaged, the SPD wouldn't actually give you much benefit. In this example, if you're using a 500 volt SPD, on a 95 volt PV line going to your charge controller, then essentially the SPD will do nothing even if you have a voltage spike of four or 500 volts. And at that voltage, that PV input, which is rated at 95 volts, will of course very likely already be damaged. Further to that, the SPD is really only capable of moving energy towards ground as explained earlier, well above the maximum operating voltage. So if we choose an SPD, which has a UC of 100 volts, which is perfectly suited for the 95 volt example that I've given, then in reality, the SPD will probably only start moving energy to ground at about 120, 150, maybe even more volts. So this is still very important because all of our charge controllers and inverter chargers are also capable of moving some energy, essentially of protecting from overvoltage, but only to a certain extent. An SPD is typically capable of moving much more power. And that's why we recommend it using it in pretty much any system. As a final tip, look at the data sheet to ensure that the SPD that you've selected is working for both DC or AC, depending on what you're connecting it to. 
So in our example where we're trying to protect the PV input of a charge controller, make sure that your SPD has a UC voltage as a DC voltage. Make sure that it's not only rated at AC, if AC at all. It's very important to do this. There are many SPDs out there which are only designed to work with AC voltages. And those will not be able to sustain the DC energies um, that are needed to protect such a DC system. So really make sure that for the PV side you select an SPD which has a DC voltage rating. And if you're connecting to the AC input of one of our inverter chargers, make sure that the SPD has an AC rating. Some SPDs have both, but certainly there are many more out there which are only designed for AC. So make sure that you stay away from those for the PV side of your power system. We hope you found this information valuable. If so, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more interesting content. Also, if you have any sales or support questions, check out the links below in the description of this video. For more videos and information, go to www.focus.com. Focus, making reliable energy access possible. Anywhere, anytime, any grid.